Hi guys, my name is Mohammed Zainuddin and I am a student of FAU Erlangen. I am doing data science from uh, Frederick Alexander University and I was uh, preparing for my exam for STMOL and as uh, you might know like we are given with the solution uh, for our homework number six. So I wanted to uh, basically record a video for those students who are still unable uh, to know like how we actually need to solve these problems because um, initially I was also facing this problem and I was worried about it like how I would be actually solving these all these problems so now since I am uh, comfortable with all uh, these uh, problems some of these problems basically uh, regarding uh, independence and conditional independence and how uh, we need to draw the graph and um, how basically we need to uh, tell whether this condition is true or false so um, I guess I uh, since uh, I understood that particular question, so I feel like I should create a video. So that uh, was the motive. So now let's go towards the video and uh, let me show you like how we can actually solve uh, that particular problem and uh, how uh, the solution is actually referring to us. So let me minimize my screen. So here's the homework number six, uh, which I was talking about. We have covariance matrix right here and we have inverse of covariance matrix and we are asked to uh, draw an undirected graphical mod for uh, the graph for x right so this is the question which we need to solve in our exam and how we need to solve it first of all we need to take care of this particular thing is whenever it is said to us that we need to draw a graph of x uh, we need to draw it corresponding with this inverse of covariance and I wanted to let you know that uh, the inverse of covariance matrix is also known as Fisier matrix, right? So let's uh, go directly towards the solution of this particular problem. So first of all, what we need to do is we can rename uh, the columns x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5, and x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5, right? So since we know that we have five different columns, we can create five different nodes. Oops. So x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5. So we, we have basically uh, created five different nodes. Now what we need to do is we actually need to check uh, the corresponding element of that particular node. So for example, we have this column x1 We are now just looking at this particular column. We can see that uh, all the values uh, of uh, That x1 is non-zero. What does it means? We need to check is x1 and x2 is uh, Non-zero or not if it is zero It means there is no connection a line would be drawn between x1 and x2, but since it is non-zero we need to uh, create a connection between x1 and x2. So from x1, we have created a connection between x1 and x2. Then for x1, we need to check for x3. And yes, it is non-zero. So for from x1 to x3, there would be a line. And similar for case for x4 and x5. Now what we would do is we are done with our x1. We would check for x2, right? And in similar way, what we would do is from x2 to x1 yes it is non-zero from x2 to x1 the line has already been drawn so we do not need to draw another line then from uh, x2 and x3 it is zero x4 and x2 it is zero and x5 and x2 it is zero so we do not need to draw the line so if you would see the entire graph uh, the entire columns one by one uh, you would actually know that this is the final solution of our problem so hence we are done with our uh, part a and that uh, the first question now uh, the second uh, part b it says like uh, there is inverse of a covariance matrix which is also known as Fisier matrix so it says if uh, an entry is zero what does it means so for example if this particular entry is zero what does it means it means that x uh, for example for this particular value it means that x2 and x3 are conditionally independent okay let me repeat it again if any uh, entry in a precision matrix uh, is zero 
then it means that that for that ij value of that Poussian matrix if it is zero it means that it is actually conditionally independent and this is what uh, written here okay so now let's go towards the part c which i guess is more important and uh, let's uh, understand how the things are actually working so what does it says it says x2 is conditionally independent of x3 given x1 x4 and x5 okay so since it is said it is conditionally independent so we need to prove it and we need to check it from the covariance matrix uh, inverse of covariance matrix so or the graph which we have made using this uh, inverse of covariance covariance matrix or Poisson matrix so if we want to test it uh, using our uh, graph how we can do it so the next problem uh, which we actually face here is we need to tell that whether this condition is true or not is x2 and x3 are conditionally independent given x1 x4 and x5 so for example we want to solve this problem uh, using this graph so how we can do it we will basically assume these uh, vertices as they are not existing so if x1, x4 and x5 does not exist, let's assume, then tell me, is there any way from x2 to x3? No, there is no way from x2 to x3 because we have considered that these, these uh, vertices does not exist and due to like since these vertices do not exist, it means that the corresponding path also does not exist. So from x2 to x3, there is no other path. And hence, we can say that uh, x2 and x3 is basically uh, conditionally independent. If there is no path between two different nodes, uh, given that the other uh, nodes, then it is called uh, conditionally independent. So now uh, I would like to tell you about this uh, part B. And how we would do is, it says x2 is conditionally independent of x5 given x1 does this condition validate or not so how we can do it we need to assume that x1 is not there so let's assume x1 is not there tell me is there any path between x2 and x5 x2 and x5 no there is no path because they exist a path when uh, x1 exists but since we have said that x1 does not exist so uh, it means there is no path between x2 and x5 and hence it is conditionally independent and the statement is true as discussed here. So now let's go towards the third statement. In this third statement, we have to observe one thing. Here, uh, this particular portion is not given. Like given that is not give, uh, given here. Okay, it is just written that x3 is independent of x4. We have to read it in this way that x3 is independent of x4. And whenever we have a question of direct totally independence, we do not need to test it from this uh, inverse of covariance matrix or Poisson matrix. We have to look into the covariance matrix directly. So how we can do it? Either we can do it by drawing this graph uh, of this matrix and then looking uh, forward to it. Otherwise, we can also do uh, this particular thing directly. How? Let's see. So, for example, it is said that x3 is independent of x4. How we can do it? For example, this is the x3 uh, column and this is the x4 row. So, the element 1 here we can get uh, from this particular matrix, covariance matrix. And here we can see since it is non zero, as you can see, it is non zero. Hence, it means that they, uh, the condition is basically false. And as we can see here, the condition is basically false because uh, the value is non-zero. If there would be a zero here, then we can say that the x3 is basically independent of x4. But since it is non-zero, so we cannot say it and the condition is basically false. Okay, so now till uh, now we got one thing that if it is direct independence, we need to check covariance matrix. And if it is uh, like conditional independence, then we need to check Poisson matrix, right? So now let's go towards the part four, how we can actually solve this problem and tell whether this condition is true or false. We need to assume that X3, X4 and X5 does not exist. So X3, X4 
and x5 does not exist. So tell, is there any path between x1 and x2? Yes, there is a path between x1 and x2, right? Yes, the path is here. So since there is a path, it means that x1 and x2 is not conditionally independent and the condition uh, basically statement is actually false. Okay, so now let's go towards our fifth question and it says, if we assume that x1 is not there, does there is a path between x4 and x5? Yes, there is a path from x4 to x1 and then x1 to x5, which means that uh, this uh, condition does not hold and x4 is not conditionally independent of x5 given x2. And the answer was not given in this question, but we now got that the answer is false. So now let's go towards the problem number three and see how we need to solve these problems. So for example, we are given with these uh, conditional independence uh, statements. And now what we need to do is we need to draw the graphs. The solution is given below, but uh, we need to reproduce it and need to understand like how we can actually solve it. So let's go. First of all, what we need to do is we, here we are given with uh, four different nodes, basically columns. So we need to draw four different nodes. So x1, x2, x3, and x4. And uh, we would also uh, draw all possible combinations of the paths. So these are the paths from x1 to x4. Okay. So these were actually all possible combination of the paths, right? So now what we need to do is we need to focus on uh, this statement, particular statement, uh, part one. And here uh, in uh, part one, we have this first uh, condition and what does it says? It says from X1 to X3, there is a path uh, via X2, okay? What does it says? From X1, we need to read this problem in such a way like uh, what I am reading. From x1 to x3, there is a path only via x2. So it means if there is no x2, let's forget uh, that, uh, let's assume that x2 is not available here, right? So we need to terminate all, uh, destroy all other parts which are uh, reaching from x1 to x3, right? So if we assume that x2 is not there, we do not need to uh, look into these paths and from x1, if I want to reach to x3, there is a path from x4, right? So what we need to do is we need to destroy this path. So I have destroyed this particular path. So now from x1, uh, I cannot go to x4 and x3, right? And then there is a direct path between x1 and x3. So we need to also destroy it. So look, what we have done here till now is, in this condition, it is said that from x1 to x3, there uh, is the path only via x2. So we need to make the graph uh, that from x1 to x2, if you want to reach from x1 to x3, you can only reach via x2. So you have to go through the x2, okay? So now you have to go through the x2 and then reach x3, right? Okay, so first condition is satisfied now. Now we need to go towards the second condition and see what does it means. It says that uh, from x2 to x4, they, the only path exists if you go via x3. So from, from x2 to x4, if you want to go there, the only path leads via x3. Okay, so let's assume x3 is not there. So there should not be other any other path. So we are not considering this path and similarly this path. So there is another path from x2 and x4, which is the direct path. So we will destroy this path. So what did we did uh, here right now is we have basically said from x2 to x4, there should not be any other path instead of uh, like going from x3. If we go from uh, like uh, there is a path uh, which is actually passing from the node x3, then that's called perfect. But if it is uh, like uh, not going from x3, but still from uh, x2, you can reach to x4, then that's not the right case. So we have destroyed all other paths. And now we have satisfied the second uh, condition as well. And now you can compare that our solution is exactly same to the solution given by the professor. So yeah, I hope you understand this particular question. Uh, but if you do not, let's uh, keep forward, uh, like let's uh, solve the other example as well. 
so you would uh, have some better concepts so let's once again draw uh, four different nodes okay so we have x1 x2 x3 and x4 we have created all different possible combinations of the paths then the first condition says from x1 to x4 if you reach from, uh, if you want to go from x1 and reach x4 you can do it uh, by passing either via x2 or x3 so if if in your path x2 exists or x3 exists then that's all perfect but if uh, there is another path rather than going from x2 and x3 then uh, it should not be in the graph so let's destroy uh, the other path for example from x1 to x4 there was a path which actually uh, was leading uh, and was leading directly and was not passing from either x2 or x3 so we have destroyed that path and now i guess there is no any other path left uh, from which you can um, go uh, and uh, to not satisfy this condition so which means this particular condition has been satisfied in this particular graph given in front of you so now we have the second condition and the second condition says from x2 to x4 for example from x2 you want to go to x4 right given that x1 and x3 so we need to uh, do is we need to assume that let's assume x1 and x3 does not exist okay so what we need to do is we need to destroy all other paths which are actually going uh, uh, directly from x2 to x4 basically we need to destroy those all those paths uh, which leads from x2 to x4 and not going through x1 or x3 uh, okay so all possible paths should be having these nodes in it so since as we can see here uh, x2 can be uh, uh, we can reach x4 uh, from x2 and through this path so we need to destroy it and i guess now we are actually done with our solution and this solution is actually looking like this one right so we have basically done our best now let's go to the part c we have x1 x2 x3 x4 let's make all possible combinations and now let's solve the first uh, condition from x1 to x4 if you want to reach from x1 to x x4 uh, all possible paths should be through x2 or x3 okay so let's destroy all other parts uh, so there is another path which is actually leading uh, from x1 to x4 and has not uh, gone through the node x2 or x3 which is this one so i am deleting this particular path so our first condition is satisfied now what we need to do is we need to go uh, and go through this particular uh, condition and it says from x1 uh, you can go to x3 from x1 you can go to x3 but you have to go it through x2 either or x4 either right so there should not be any other path but as we can see here there is a direct path which is going there so we have basically destroyed all other paths now which are actually left are actually satisfying this condition that there is no other path from x1 to x3 rather than going through these nodes right so we have this particular graph left now we have this third particular condition and it says from x3 if you want to go to x4 all the paths lead from either x1 or x2 but we see that there is a direct path between x3 and x4 so we destroyed that particular path and now uh, if you would compare we have actually reached our solution and this condition is also satisfied so that was the particular uh, answer and the way you can solve these problems now let's move forward towards problem number four and in this problem number four it is similar to problem number two which we have solved earlier but let's practice and see are you familiar how you would solve this particular problem so initially what is this covariance matrix what is this inverse of covariance matrix or precision matrix right okay so whenever there is a question to draw a graph undirected graphical model for x which matrix would you use this one or this one this one so you have to use the precision matrix at that particular moment 
So let's draw the graph. Let's see. Uh, we have labeled x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5, right? And let's draw x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5, right? And it says that x1 and x2 are non-zero, right? This value is non-zero. It means there should be a connection. So x1 is connecting towards x2. Similarly, x3, x4, and x5, right? Now what we will do is we are done with x1. We will check with x2. And x2 says x2 has uh, connection with x1. x2 has connection with x1 already. x2 has connection with itself. Yeah, that's obvious. And then we have to see uh, is there any connection between x2 and x3? No, there is no connection. So no other line would be drawn uh, from x2 to x3. And similar for x4 and x5, right? So in this way, we will check another column and then other and then other. So we will draw all the lines and all the possible combinations uh, of the paths. And then we are done with our undirected graphical model. So that's the graph which is given here. And we are done uh, with our particular solution. So now let's move forward towards the part B and it says we need to check whether these conditions exist or not. So I, I have told you earlier, I guess you have uh, like you remember that if we are given these uh, given that conditions like this one, if you are given these conditions, given that also you need to check it from Precision matrix or the graph which we made through the Precision matrix. But if there are uh, some condition like this one, C and E, what we need to do is we need to check it from directly from the covariance matrix, right? So uh, let's solve our problem. So the first part, what does uh, the first part says? It says for uh, x1 is conditionally independent of x3 given that x2, x4 and x5. So let's assume x2, x4 and x5 are not there. So tell me, is there any path from x1 to x3? Yes, there is a path and if there is a path, it means the condition is false and it is not uh, basically conditionally independent and this is what said here, right? And if you want, uh, want to tell it using the matrix, uh, you can say that from x1 and x3, this is the particular uh, point and it is not zero. Since it is not zero, it means that it is not conditionally uh, independent given other all the columns. So this is the basically justification given right here. So the next problem is that x2 and x3 is uh, conditionally independent given that x1. So we need to assume that x1 is not there and tell me is there any way from x2 to x3? No, there is not any way left which means it is conditionally independent. Okay. So now uh, let's move forward uh, to uh, part C. And it says x3 and x4 are independent. I said independent, not I said conditionally independent. Since I said independent, you need to check it from covariance matrix. And now x3 and x4, if we check it, so this is that particular element uh, and it is non zero. Since it is non zero, it means that this conditional does not hold. And basically, x3 and x4 are dependent but they said it is independent, but it is not, right? So this condition is false, right? So now let's move towards uh, the D part. It says X1 is conditionally independent of X3, assuming X2 is not there. So let's assume X2 is not there. Is there any path from X1 to X3? Yeah, there is. So uh, the statement uh, is false and X1 and X3 are not conditionally independent as you can see here. So now the last part is x1 and x3 are independent. So for that purpose, we need to use x1 and x3 and it is non-zero. Since it is non-zero, it is the statement is false and x1 and x2, uh, x1 and x5 are dependent. And the answer is false. So these were the solutions to our uh, problem related to uh, independence and conditionally independence.
so i hope guys you now understood like how you would need to solve these uh, problems in your coming exam of stmol i hope so you uh, do well in the exam and do also pray for me as well so meet you in the next video take care till then bye bye